Today we're out here looking at the Remington Versamax Tactical Shotgun. Uh, when Remington introduced our Versamax uh, a little over a year ago, uh, we reviewed it, I guess, about nine months ago. But anyway, at that time, uh, it was in the sporting versions, you know, for hunting and whatever, and people started hollering immediately for a tactical version, and here it is. It's got some features that uh, makes it real good as a tactical shotgun. Uh, first thing it's got, it's got a 22-inch barrel, and it comes with an, uh, it has screw-in chokes. It comes with a uh, improved cylinder choke tube and also this uh, breaching choke tube right here that's vented. And also you can put it right up against the door hinge if you want to and blow the hinge off the door, blow the lock off the door, whatever. It, it serves as a standoff for that purpose. Me, I just soon turn the knob and go on in, but a lot of people like to do that. But anyway, if you need to open the door and it's locked up, you can open it that way. Uh, this little device is a pretty good weapon in of itself. You can pop somebody in the forehead or that thing and get a good tissue sample. But anyway, it comes with those tubes. It's got high-vis sights, and it comes with uh, extra high-vis sights in the tool to install them. Gives you a good bead on the front of it. Also has a mid-bead. It has this accessory rail right here that serves as a, a mag tube clamp uh, to hold the extended mag on here. And this mag holds uh, eight rounds, two and three-quarter inch. It'll hold seven rounds, three inch magnum, and we'll talk a little bit about the three and a half inch in a little bit. The opposite side of this has a sling stud on it. So it's a real secure, bolted on really well, supports the mag tube, and serves to mount accessories on there. Also has a heavy duty vent rib on it, um, synthetic stock on it. Uh, the stock design is, is real good. It has these uh, a good grasping area right here, real easy to hold. As we move on back, we've got the oversized bolt release shut the bolt. We've got the oversized uh, charging knob for uh, opening the bolt. Makes it real easy to grasp even if you got gloves on. Oversized button safety, cross bolt safety, plenty of room inside the trigger guard uh, for even a glove finger. It loads real easy through the bottom. Uh, as we move on back here, the stock has got a real good design to it. It comes with extra shim and uh, you, you run your through bolt through different holes where you can adjust both the pitch and the cast on this stock to fit the individual shooter. Uh, as you can see here, I've got the high comb on it now. It comes with a, a, a low and a high. You just grasp it, pop it out, put the other one in. I like the high one. It gets my eye up right behind that uh, rib where I can look at that bead really well. Uh, excellent, real soft recoil pad, which really uh, helps dissipate the recoil shooting the heavy loads in this thing. Uh, it's got a unique gas system, just like we showed you when we reviewed the uh, Versamax before. It's got twin tubes right under here. You don't have the whole full length spring on your mag tube and all that stuff. Everything's done down here, and the uh, the length of the shot shells regulates the amount of gas to work the system, so you're not overworking it, but you got enough power to work it even with light target loads. Uh, and for that, I also refer you back to our other uh, previous article on the Versamax. It'll explain those pistons a little better. No need to replow the same ground here. We're talking here about the tactical version of this, and this is really good tactical shotgun. Now, on the shooting, the, uh, the shells, I want to show you a few things here. On these shells right here, uh, this is a uh, light, hand-loaded, one-ounce target load. This is a Remington STX, one and an eighth-ounce target load. This is a three inch magnum, and this is a three and a half inch magnum. Now this gun is listed to shoot any two and three quarter and three inch magnum, and it'll do it well. But it will also shoot this three and a half inch magnum. Now the reason that Remington don't list this tactical version for the three and a half inch magnum is due to ammo. Some brands, not all of them, some brands when you stack this mag tube full of heavy two ounce loaded um, three and a half inch magnums, when it starts to recoil, these long cases will start to buckle and cause uh, functioning problems. Now me, uh, you know, the best place for a, a gun like this with a three and a half inch magnum is like in turkey hunting. And you load two in the tube and one in the chamber, it gives you three shots and that's two more than you're going to need turkey hunting. Uh, turkey hunting is usually you got a one shot proposition and as soon as you pull the trigger in most states, you're done hunting for the day because you've got your bag limit for that day. There's no need to load this mag plumb full of three and a half inch shells. And that is, like I said, with some brands of uh, ammunition, they'll get some shell buckling because of that long tube. The gun functions fine with three and a half inch. It's got the chamber cut for three and a half inch, just like the other sporting versions of it. And it works really well with three and a half inch. Just don't load this tube full. Using it for tactical purposes, buckshot and that kind of thing, you're gonna wanna use a different ammo anyway instead of your three and a half inch. You're gonna use either three inch or I like the two and three quarter. Uh, one good load is a 
this uh, federal load right here. It's your standard uh, buck load. It's got nine pellets of double alt buck in it. So you've got nine 32 caliber uh, projectiles out there weighing almost 50 grains each, hitting the target all at one time. Uh, that's a real good load. Another one I really like is this Winchester PDX-1, and in it you've got three double alt bucks atop a one-ounce slug. So you've got a lot of uh, projectile weight coming out of there and hitting hard. Really functions well uh, on targets at normal ranges that I've shot it at. Uh, you'll end up with your slug in the middle and the three uh, buckshot circling it around your slug. So it gives a real good pattern. Works really well if you're unsure if you want the slug or the buck. That one gives you both in one. Now let me uh, swing over here a minute, folks. I want to show you something about this. This is a light eighth of an ounce uh, target load and uh, a lot of people says it's no good for defense but that's not true it throws out a lot of shot that's uh, uh, over 500 grains of shot now here are three uh, cartridges that are really popular for defense you got a nine millimeter Luger your 40 Smith & Wesson and your 45 ACP this uh, one and the eighth ounce target load is more powerful than any one of these and it also has more power than all three of these put together uh, these three run out of there you've got a total of you got a, about a 200 grain or 230 if you want to go up that high 150 grain and then a 115 this is throwing more lead than all three of those put together and throwing it at a faster speed so it's a it's really good choice for home defense it's got light recoil it's not going to shoot through a person and then keep going as would a slug or maybe double off buck it's not going to over penetrate the target but it'll make a good fist size hole in flesh across your typical room, uh, 12 feet or so across your bedroom. Anyway, it's a good low recoil choice, but if you want to, like I said, there's a lot of good choices uh, in uh, defensive shotgun ammo or offensive shotgun ammo for your police department or whatever, you use your uh, weapons a little bit differently. And the uh, Versamax Tactical is a real good choice because it'll shoot any or all of this ammo. You can mix them up in the tube, it doesn't matter. Light logs, heavy logs, slugs, buckshot, whatever you want to. This Remington Versamax Tactical will handle it all. This uh, Versamax Tactical has a 22 inch barrel, which is about as long as you want on a tactical shotgun. Anywhere from 18 to 22 works really well. A lot of people want a pistol grip on a shotgun uh, for home defense, making it more compact, but I don't. And the reason is it's not in the way. You know, if you hold a pistol grip down like this, let me turn around here, all this is behind you. It's not in the way of anything. That's just as compact as if you just had a pistol grip right there. And when you hold it up, hold the shotgun up, you're still, you know, you're holding out about the distance you'd be holding a pistol or whatever. So it's, it's not in the way at all, and you can tuck it under your arm like this. If you have to go one-handed to open a door or to uh, uh, push somebody back or whatever you need to do, you can operate these one-handed. A lot of people, uh, another thing I want to talk about for uh, defense, they say a pump's better, but I don't agree. I like a semi-automatic. One thing, it handles the recoil better, and it self loads it. Uh, you don't have to uh, work the action. You can do it one-handed. Um, and I don't know why, but people are reluctant to go to a semi-automatic on a tactical shotgun, but they're reliable. You know, people, uh, law enforcement, everybody went to uh, semi-automatics on the handguns years ago, and these guns work, and they work well. You know, they don't jam up like they used to. Uh, this First Max Tactical is really reliable. There's some other good ones on the market, but a semi-auto, I think, is the way to go. A pump simpler, pump's a lot cheaper. You know, that's one reason about a pump. But, uh, you know, if you got the money to spend on it and you want to get the best, get you a good, uh, reliable semi-auto, one that's not uh, just some of the cheap stuff, get something good, and they work as well as a semi-automatic handgun. They're very reliable, and they, like I said, they handle the recoil really well. Uh, we just shot a magazine full of the uh, Remington STX uh, target logs, uh, ounce and eighth at about 1,200 feet per second. Shot really well. The, the gun hounds it. There's just no pain at all on the shoulder. Now we've got some three-inch Magnum uh, nine-pellet buck logs in here. And uh, I'm sorry, these are two and three-quarter-inch Magnum nine-pellet buck logs. We'll get to some three-inch stuff here in a minute. Uh, we're going to try. We're going to shoot off three of these and uh, show just how well it handles the red coil. We shoot some heavy uh, one and three quarter ounce, three inch turkey loads.
little more recoil, but still no pain to the shoulder. This gun just handles it so well. It, uh, uh, they say it, uh, that it reduces the recoil of a 12 down to a 20, but the problem, uh, a lot of 20 gauges kick as much as 12 gauges because the guns are lighter. This gun here weighs in right at eight pounds, and that along with the gas system and the excellent recoil pad, it just, it don't hurt you to shoot this I've got button. the mag mix, so we're gonna start with a light two and three quarter inch load, then we're going to a three inch magnum, and then the three and a half inch that uh, a lot of people says this gun won't shoot, shoots it just fine. Like I said, just don't load the mag tube full of them. You can shoot the three and a half just fine. You can see the progression on the recoil there a little bit, but again, it don't hurt to shoot this stuff. It's just the softest shooting 12 gauge I've ever fired. We're gonna pop a silhouette target now, just show how this does it. Typical combat ranges, we're out around eight to 10 yards here. Uh, I've got the first one to put a PDX-1 in his chest, which that's the one ounce slug and the uh, three uh, double alt buck. Then we're gonna give him a nine pellet uh, buckshot right in the face. you one thing on this a lot of people says you know that a shotgun it'll just spread and kill everything in that general zip code it won't do it you can see at the distance we was at right here i can cover all that with just the palm of my hand those that slug and three buck right here same thing on the the nine pellets of buckshot but you got nine 32 caliber uh, and it's a full ounce load hitting him all together like that it's, just, it's devastating it's a, a close range there's nothing that we can legally own that's better than a good defensive shotgun. We've been shooting this gun with every kind of 12 gauge stuff we can put through it. Uh, light load, so the heaviest stuff I could get a hold of. It also, the size of it, it'll work great as a turkey gun. Uh, they don't advertise as a turkey gun, but it's, it's, it's the right size. It's shorter than the other Versamax shotguns. It'll handle the three and a half inch stuff and uh, get you a good turkey choke to go in it. Call uh, George Trulock at Trulock Chokes and uh, Tell him what you want, tell him the size shot you're going to be shooting and the pattern you want to shoot, and he can supply the right choke. A lot of people over choke on a turkey choke, but he can give you the right constriction you need and uh, sell you the choke will do a good job, make an excellent turkey gun out of this home defense gun.